Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from azureautomation.com and today we are going to check out how we can run Visual Studio 2019 in Windows 10 which is running inside Parallels Desktop. As we all know that Parallels Desktop currently support Windows 10 ARM based processor not the whole Intel x86 or 64-bit processor at the moment because Parallel Desktop is still in development stage and they have proved the point that Parallels can run on Mac operating system powered by Apple Silicon M1 chipset. Well as I said you saw that the booting of Windows 10 is pretty faster, pretty insane and also in our last video we discussed how we can run different applications which actually runs on a Windows machine pretty much on the Windows 10 ARM based OS as well. We also saw different softwares like Visual Studio Code, Visual Studio itself, Edge Chrome Browser, IntelliJ ID and all those popular IDs for development and testing. And in this video we are going to see how we can use Visual Studio 2019 to perform automation testing using Selenium, the most popular cross browser testing tool available on the market. At the same time we'll also try to see how we can use Specflow which is used for PDDs and stuff in this particular video. So for doing that I am going to open Visual Studio 2019 which I have already installed in our earlier video as you know and it is working pretty charm and we also saw an hello world program in our last video. And in this video we are going to quickly try to create a new project where we are going to see how we can run a selenium test from Visual Studio 2019 which is running on Windows ARM processor which is running on the top of Parallels desktop in Apple Silicon M1. So I'm just gonna create a test project. So I'm just gonna select test and you can see that we get this NUnit test project of .NET Core and I'm gonna choose C Sharp as the language binding. I'm gonna choose next and then I'm just gonna leave the name to Selenium test and I'm gonna hit create. So this is gonna create a .NET Core project for us under the name of Selenium test. The project creation is taking a bit longer than expected from the normal Windows machine which runs on Parallels desktop like an x86 architecture but this ARM based Windows 10 is kind of slower but I think it's maybe a glitch or maybe it's a glitch in the Windows 10 ARM OS itself. I don't think it's anything to do with Parallels desktop itself. So you can see that it's creating the project for us and the project is available for us over here and I'm just gonna go to the dependencies pretty much like how we used to do for any test project in C Sharp and I'm going to select the manage NuGet package and we need to install Selenium because Selenium is the cross browser testing tool uh, to perform any automation testing in the browsers so I'm just going to search for Selenium pretty cool and I get the Selenium web driver here and as you can see that once I start installing the Selenium web driver it also shows pretty much exactly like how it does on the normal uh, Windows 10 which is running on different architectures as well. So these things, the experience looks pretty much exactly the same like how it does with other architecture operating systems and I don't see any difference in both of them. And because we are also going to discuss about Specflow in this video, I'm also going to choose Specflow and here is the Specflow. I'm going to install the latest and the greatest version. And I need the specflow n unit because that's going to list the test on our test explorer. And we also need to install the specflow tools or DMS build generations because that's required for the code behind. So I'm going to install that. So that's it. I mean, I think all the packages are kind of installed right now. And now I also need to install a extension within our Visual Studio, and we'll see if that extension is also being installed or installing find without any problem. So I'm going to go to the online. I'm going to search for specflow and you can see that the specflow is coming in. I install that and tells that your changes will be scheduled uh, once you reopen your Visual Studio once again. So I'm probably going to close this guy. I'm going to save this in the Visual Studio and you can see that the extension is currently installing within our Visual Studio. I'm going to say modify and it's done. So next time if I open Visual Studio, the Specflow extension will be already installed. All right, so I'm going to open the Selenium test. And this time you can see that it's opening pretty faster. I mean, I think while creating the project, the template uh, loads quite slower, but opening the project looks all right to me. Okay, so it's available. And I could see that all the packages are coming through, which is pretty good. 
So now I can start writing a simple Selenium code and we'll see how it actually works. So I'm just gonna open the uh, Edge browser and I'm gonna search for eaapp.sami.com. So this is the website which I heavily use for most of my automation testings. Uh, so I'm just gonna use this guy. So as we know in Selenium, while we open a browser, we need to have the IE web driver interface. So I'm just gonna write that. And I'm gonna add the references and I'm gonna set up the driver here. So in order to set up the driver, we need the Chrome driver because that's what I'm gonna be using uh, over here. And I have not installed Chrome driver in my environment variables and things of that nature. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add one more NuGet package. And this NuGet package is something which is very useful while opening the Chrome uh, drivers. So I'm just gonna call this as a web driver manager. And I'm gonna install this guy. This will automatically detect the Chrome driver matching my Chromes installed within my machine and all those things. So this is quite hand tool. And I'm gonna do this. Driver manager or whatever. Windows driver manager dot driver manager setup driver of Chrome config. I think so. So I'm gonna hit option enter. So this is gonna be the reference. And then I require the Chrome driver. So pip driver is equal to new of the Chrome driver. So this is gonna be spawning the Chrome driver for me. I'm gonna import the references. And this is the setup part. And then we will do the launching of the browser part here and we'll see how it actually works. So I'm just gonna open the web driver dot navigate dot go to URL of this URL that we just copied and we're gonna perform a login click so I'm just gonna do a web driver dot find element by dot link text of login I think let's see that's the case yep and once I click this, it brings me up the username and password. So I can quickly see what's the username values. ID is username and password is password. So webdriver dot find element by dot ID as username dot send keys of admin. I'm not gonna type a whole lot of code here. So I'm just gonna uh, save this and I'm gonna run this test and I will see how it actually works. For that, I require a test explorer. So I'm gonna go to the test, test explorer. I'm gonna add this guy over here. And the test is popping up and we'll run the test. So now, hopefully if everything is correct, then it should spawn the browser for me, run the test, there you go. You can see that the, pro the browser is launching. Uh, I just missed one more piece of code. I think this proves the point that it's working fine without any problem. Uh, I actually need to do a click operation here because I didn't did the click. It's not gonna click for us. So that is a catch there. But it looks like it is working fine. At least I could see that the browser is being navigated until that point, which is pretty cool. So it looks like this is working fine without any problem. So this is really, really cool. So we can next do is we can try to create a specflow project uh, and we'll see if the specflow is working fine. So if that works, then my requirement of having a Windows machine is completely gone because that is the main purpose I use Visual Studio because Visual Studio for Mac is not good for specflow at all, but uh, Windows is very, very good. But since we are running the Mac right now and because we require few of them uh, like a Windows dependency then probably I can just switch to my parallels desktop with Windows 10 and I can try running all of them over here and then I can switch back to Mac and I can do all the awesome steps which I can do on the Mac powered by Apple Silicon M1 which is pretty pretty faster than compared to my Windows machine which I have. So I will try to quickly do a specflow project and we'll see if that works. So instead of doing that, uh, maybe me writing it, I'm just gonna do a uh, GitHub of execute automation. 
I'm going to go to the repositories. So there is a Selenium C Sharp Net Core project. And this is a SpecFlow project, as you can see over here, which is quite good. So I'm just going to download this project as a zip file. And because I don't really have a GitHub desktop at the moment, I'm not cloning it. I'm just going to open this one. I'm not going to write any line of code because it's kind of boring if I keep writing the same code. So I'm just going to paste it over here. And I'm just going to open the uh, C Sharp project, which I just have. I think the only thing which I need to change is the uh, web driver manager for this project. I don't think the web driver manager does exist. Oh yeah, it's there, which is cool. So now I can directly go to this project and you can see that there's a login feature. This is the SpecFlow project. So if I just double click that, you can see that it's gonna open the uh, SpecFlow. You can see that it's a new to SpecFlow, which is all good. And there is this feature file, which is awesome. So now I can get the same experience that I used to get uh, with the Windows machine, my Dell XPS. It's coming through over here. And then if I run this, you can see that the test got passed without any problem, which is all pretty good. So it looks like this is working fine as well. So this way it proves the point that Visual Studio 2019 on a Windows 10 ARM-based operating system is running fine with a full-blown Visual Studio. And this is really, really cool. So this way it, it removes the need for me to have a Dell XPS machine which I heavily use for performing my Visual Studio usage on Windows, but you can see that this is running so smooth on the Parallels desktop, and you can see that it is quite awesome. And the memory usage at the moment, as you know, is also very, very lesser. And you can see that even though it's claimed to be like 11.64 GB, I'm not really doing anything at the moment on my Mac unless until I really need those memory. I'm just going to use my Windows. So if I'm done with my Windows, I can probably pass the windows or maybe shut down the windows operating system that way it will free up my space but as you can see the memory at the moment unless until i really use anything it is really, really not required to have this particular uh, memory in my machine so you can see that boom summon gb comes in for me as a memory used uh, and I can start using my Mac at the moment if I'm not really going to use my Windows. So this way it saves my battery at the same time it saves my memory and I can keep using my Windows if I want and then I start using my Mac from the place where I left. So once again thank you very much for watching this video. Leave your comments and questions below like what else you need to see on Apple's M1 parallel desktop or anything related to the Mac powered by Apple M1 chipset so that we can discuss about it. Thank you.